friend Sarah Paulson. Yeah. What was it like directing American Horror Story? Um, Is that your first time directing? It was my first time directing. Yay. And in general or just first time on the show? I direct a lot of my life. Yes. And a lot of things that I'd like to go a particular way, yes. I like to tell that story. How to go. Sure okay. do. Yeah. Um, nobody does it because, you know, mm -hmm. nobody cares that I would like it but to be a certain on way. American on American Horror Story, story when you directed, <laughs> when they I directed. Care. Um, That was the hardest thing I've ever done mm. because it was personally very confronting mm. for me because I had to contend with the fact that I, by nature, uh, am a panicker. Oh. And the one thing you don't want in your director is watching somebody, their eyes spinning with sort of abject terror. And, um, you know, part of what happens on American Horror Story is we get our scripts um, very close to when we're shooting. Mm -hmm. And I was supposed to direct episode eight of the show, and I got and a phone call from Ryan it. saying, would you please direct the Return to Murder House episode, which is basically going back to season one, which is the most- I know, I was really confused when I watched it yeah, first. I was like, you wait, were like, wait, this is-, is this a... yeah, yeah, it's yeah. seven years later, but back in time. And so I got to direct Jessica Lange, and I got to direct Kathy Bates, and Frances Conroy, and Emma, and Billy Porter, and all these, it was very, very special. But I had no prep time, because mm. I was supposed to direct a month and a half and later. And were you working And I was up to very heavy in the episode that preceded yeah. it, so I had no, zero prep. During my turnarounds, I was sitting there with my first AD, and he's like, do you want a 50-foot crane? Do you want a 30, and I was like. You're like, definitely I definitely foot. want the 70-foot crane yep. if I could get it, because who doesn't want. Was that want... that shot when <laughs> you guys came in the house? Maybe. Yeah. You watched it. I did. I watched yours too. Oh, yeah. It was really good. <laughs> you weren't in yours very much, which the I thought. The first time I directed, okay. I was in 87 or 80 or 90 percent of the episode. And, and were, I thought and I was going to drown. I'm never going to do that again. Yeah, it's not. It's not ideal. It's in really this, not. No. Um, but keep talking. I don't want to. No, I you. just was like in my wig, or I had my my wig cap on and my press on nails mm -hmm. for the character I was playing, and I had the the headphones on calling action, then I came into the scene quite late. And so I would just throw the headphones yes. and the contacts oh, on the I... floor, run into the scene. It was just, it was, it was scary. It was really, really scary. It's... Because I, I think it's, I think when you're doing something for the first time always, um, if you're it's like me, I'm, it's hard to be present and I'm just so worried about failing. You know, mm. it's this thing I have in life in general that I'm always sort of dancing on the edge it's of so how to get comfortable with that, with that that's what I was saying to you is that my fear comes after. Yeah. I like fine tooth comb and go back on things, but I'm like, I'm like, let's go. But I guess in the moment <laughs> I was very present and terrified mm. and I was aware I was terrified. Because you were present. I was present yeah. in that, you know, because I just wanted it to go well and I wanted to be able to talk to the actors in a way that was helpful and I wanted to, I'm sure you, know. you did, Sarah. I don't know. It I'm was sure hard. You did. After was hard. the fact, how did you feel about it? I really want to do it again. Yeah, I really do want to do it again. Uh, also, just what do you a, love about it? That's a very good question. Um, I love talking to the actor, mm. and I love to try to find a way to tell a story with the camera. I know, I thought that was and I thought this is really, you know, and, and I don't know that I always watched movies in this way, but now mm. when I watch a movie, I remember in that sort of opening sequence in A Star Is Born, and I remember thinking, oh, Bradley Cooper did this amazing thing where where Gaga's walking up, she's ascending as the title sequence comes on and mm -hmm. she's sort of walking between the, yeah, the stars born. And I remember she's that, walking up yeah. and it's sort of this beautiful visual metaphor of her rise that we're about to watch in this mm -hmm. movie. And I thought, and I don't know if I would have thought that way before. before I had sort of had to figure out where to put the camera. And sometimes on Horror Story, we're going so quickly. I mean, yeah. the thing about television is you're doing upwards of, you know, seven to 10 pages of dialogue a day. Mm. Whereas in a movie, you do a page and a half. Mm. Anytime I'm on a movie, I'm like, let's go. go! I know, people are like, <laughs> they're like, like, you work long hours, and but like, you must sit around all day. I'm like, I'm like no, no, we don't. We, do we are going nonstop all stop. the time. And yeah. so it's really, um, it, it's, it's, it's a lot. It's, yeah. But it was exciting, it was terrifying. All the things that, you know, make you feel like a living, breathing person and, mm. and the that you The good challenges. The good challenges. Who the hell are you? A friend of the house and its residents. They don't take kindly to strangers. You ain't dead. Oh, honey, I'm one of the few live ones they let come and go. And you are Madison Montgomery. Oh. So yeah. What about you? How many times have you directed your show now? I've directed Blackish twice and I directed Girlfriends once. Um, you directed Girlfriends? I directed so this is... the last episode that Girlfriends ever shot. So you, this the is something you've strike. been wanting to do yeah. and have actually done. For... Absolutely. Wow. Um, and, and I've directed other things that I've shot of my own. Um, wow, that's so impressive. 
I don't know if it's impressive. I think it really is but, because um, to say you want to do something and then to go out and do it, I think is right. It's it's I'll it's one thing to have the idea the and the hope and, and the yeah. dream of doing mm -hmm. it, but then to sort of have an opportunity presented to you and and to seize on it because sometimes yeah. I might go, oh, yes, I really want to do that, but nothing could be scarier, so I won't. You know, I think and the scarier it is, the more I lean into it. I like to think I'm that way, and then sometimes I find that, that I'm you're just not scared. I don't know if I did. I feel like I disagree <laughs> on you. On that, I feel like I disagree on you. That's my new expression. I disagree on you. I, disagree <laughs> I would like to call it disagree on you. On you. <laughs> on you. <laughs> but I love it. Yeah. I love directing. Um, they were very conscious of allowing a prep week. So, you That's know, good. we do five episodes and have a week off. So the two episodes I directed, I had my week of prep during my hiatus. And the prep week is everything. Yeah. Um, and I, in general, am like a really diligent, prepared person. Mm -hmm. Like that's like Me who too. I am in life. Me too. So um, the prep week was like everything. And then the first moment still, I don't care how much you prep. Like you I got action the, free. oh my God, the biggest cold sweat. <laughs> I know. I was like, I have one just thinking about it. I'm like, oh, oh God. Yeah. And it was crazy because, you know, obviously it's a moving, breathing thing. And yep. there's things you prepare that just don't work. This is or the part of have, it that was yeah. hard for me. I you was have not an idea, very flexible. Yeah. And then yeah. it doesn't really work with the actors. Yeah. They don't feel right about it or some camera thing. And how work. often have you been that person in a scene with oh, a director the, who comes I'm, in and you're like, Sarah, I, <laughs> you know, we're, I mean, come on. We've had this conversation. I don't believe this. this I call, uh, what did you just say? I call on you. Uh, disagree. Uh, disagree I call on you. disagree on you. I call disagree on you. Yeah, my favorite yeah. is an actor. I'm like, why? But why? Yeah. But like, why but would, why I, would I sit there? But why would I be standing and here? And then, of course, once I was directing, I was like, I cannot believe you've ever, <laughs> ever said to a director who's walked on this set for the first time, why? I because had a lot more compassion, I but I was still very yeah. open to the why. Yeah, yeah. Because that was all the stuff I was going through. But what I discovered this last season, so in the fifth season when I directed my mm -hmm. second time on Blackish. Because I wasn't in everything. Yeah, you weren't in that one as much. Yeah. Um, I actually got to feel my style as a director, like start to emerge. Mm. And it was really exciting. Um, I think the biggest difficulty for me is um, w having to think about my face oh, sure. and what I look like. Because sure. as a director, I put my hands all over my face me while too. I'm watching I the monitor. I had my hands in my hair. I mean, I was like, like a, pulling uh -huh, on my hair. I was doing this. Me so too. they kept having to touch me up. And I was like, this is such a waste of time. Mm. Like, seriously, it doesn't matter. Mm. And then I also found the first time I directed Blackish, I did not get enough coverage of me. Because I was like, we got it. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, and so I you, went into the editing you room. You forsook yourself in yes. a way. Yeah. And I went into the editing room and I was like, I know I did it that way. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's me doing it that way. My nose in Anthony's coverage. <laughs> like, like, I was like, oh, we can't use that. Um, so that was one of the things that's I had funny. to pay attention to. Yeah. But I love figuring out how to tell a picture mm -hmm. through, uh, tell a story, story through, through pictures. pictures. Yep. I really... They said the hardest part about being a director, everyone that I asked in advance, is that you have to answer a thousand questions and know what your point of view is. And I was like, well, that's easy for me. <laughs> I mean, that's well, like... I, did they make you take the class at the DGA, which I had to do no. prior to directing? Because you probably became a member of the DGA earlier. Earlier, on There's a class that they have you take that was so incredible. It was a nine-hour like class. I took it before Girlfriends. Oh, so maybe was you so did. so long ago. So I took that nine-hour class. And one of the things that might have been Leslie Linka Gladder who said, you know, you can you cannot have the answer to a question. Mm. And it was incredibly liberating. And she said, you can, you can say, I don't know, but you have to come back to the person when you do know and give them the answer once you've discovered it. You and don't have to know in the really moment. That's really helpful. And it was really helpful And to me. I found that that was my favorite tool mm. um, as a director and as a new director mm -hmm. is to say, I don't know, what are the choices? Mm -hmm. And then be able to choose. Mm -hmm. And then Eva Longoria gave me the best tip which was, I said, but I don't know what everything's called. She said, you don't have to. Mm -hmm. She said, make sounds and use your hands. Oh, she well, said, that I don't have a problem no, with. But I know, like, but I want this and I want to, and I want to. But that's exactly right. She was like, go, vroom. <laughs> and I wanted to go, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> like, I was like, bounce from here, bounce back. But like, so there that's was a lot so of good. that, and that was really helpful. But I think also, you but know. But people on your crew speak Tracy, right? They, sure. Sure. They so do that speak I had Tracy. that helpful too, because I had people speaking some some mm -hmm. Sarah. That, and you have a lot of helpful. people that are on your, you know, on your side. On your side. And like they're rooting for you. So what about you 
going outside of your zone of your show and perhaps I would directing love to. somewhere would else. Would you? I would love to, but I, I, I have. I feel terrified I feel, about I that. I feel extra terrified because I know I had so much support. I know. Like they um, were not going to let us fail. They were not going to let us yeah. fail. And I think there was a, a great sense of camaraderie and yeah. actors coming out of their trailers much faster than they normally do because I was like, I'm losing the light. And I would personally knock and uh, be, yes. you know, hey, could we? Um, I still can't believe it. Hmm? One second, Diana's small enough to be swaddled in the palm of my hand, and next thing you know, she's talking about her first date. Uh-huh. Twins are growing up, babe. Mm-hmm. Tracy, yes. my question for you yes, Sarah. is, compared to the first time, what year was it when you first directed? It was a really long time ago. <laughs> what was the year? I really want to know. Um, we finished Girlfriends. I couldn't tell you. Okay. How many female directors did you have on any on the total season, all, all the seasons of Girlfriends together, did quite you? Quite a few. Quite a few. Yeah. How we, rare was that? Debbie Re- Allen. Wow. Um, and repeat. Linda Mendo- yeah, yeah we had repeats. Uh-huh. Um, and then we, how many directors did you have on female directors on Blackish from the from ha- the outset? Handful. 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 So fewer. Than, fewer. Definitely uh-huh. fewer. But we have had quite a few. Millicent was on Girlfriends and on Blackish. Mary Lou Belli was on Girlfriends. What do you attribute? Uh, Mara was a female showrunner. Oh. Mm -hmm. Um, So it was important to her then. I think it was important to her then. You know, it's interesting. I was a bit spoiled on Girlfriends Mm -hmm. and didn't realize how Mm male-dominated the television world is because Mm -hmm. on Girlfriends, we really, um, there were women in power. There there was a woman creator and showrunner. Um, A lot of our head writers and producer writers were women. Um, so by the time when I got that to... That was rare. I mean, but that... It was, was rare. But not only were they women, there were black, black people women. everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, in all departments, our mm-hmm. DP was a black man, Don Morgan. Wow. Um, so that it's been, it was, it, it's an adjustment. It's an adjustment. It's gotta be. Yeah. Um, how about you, Sarah, throughout um, your career as you have... Um, because you and I are both in our 20s. I'm about, I'm 26. I Yeah, that's so weird because I'm 25. That's so weird that you're younger. I know. Um, I'm so funny because in real I life, I think no, I'm... No, we're my, the same age, aren't we? I think I'm older than you. You are? I think so. I'm 46. I'm 44. See? I'm older than... That's why I'm 25 in my <laughs> I <like> life. <laughs> By the way, do you not love... I love getting older. I'm I'm enjoying it. I'm 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 enjoying it. <laughs> That's such a lie. You're a liar. It's not. I guess. I, I guess disagree I, on you. I disagree on you. I guess I'm not feeling. I think because to take it full circle for where we from where we began mm. of, of having that time in our working lives where mm. I wasn't working the way I wanted to. Yeah. I didn't really hit that moment of feeling seen mm. until I was really in my late 30s. And yeah, so some part of me feels like that was the moment when I bloomed and people were willing to Receive Smell you? my flower, I almost Sure, said. that's a little, that's, I don't. I disagree on I, you. On you. <laughs> I was trying to go with the metaphor, and then it took me down a road. Okay. Actually. I think because the moment I felt more uh, seen was, mm. was as I was older, so it, it has never had a, a negative connotation. Yeah. The aging In this part of industry. my working life. I've, I have right. richer material to work with. Mm-hmm. I have more people calling. I have more interest in mm-hmm. what I might have to offer than I ever did as a young person. Mm-hmm. And so I have to I have to put that into the mix in my brain when I confront the moments of, oh my God, what's gonna happen? But you are one of my markers. Um, I am? Yeah. Oh. You're just one of my, you're one of my women mm-hmm. um, publicly who, um, really owns the freedom of your choices, Mm -hmm. both in the choices you make in your career Mm -hmm. and how you live your life. Mm -hmm. And it's so clear that you are substantially yourself. Mm -hmm. um, And you are just one of those models for me of Mm -hmm. encouraging me to do the same in my life when I get scared of like, well, that's not the way everyone else is doing it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, well, this isn't going as everyone like we, else had it planned. I really, We've been on similar paths We have been on way. similar paths, yes. It's so funny, because remember when I called you when mm-hmm. I, I was doing my first sort of fashion-y mm-hmm. magazine, and I was so panicked about all of these things. I was just being confronted by my body, what I felt about it, my face. Did I belong here? Did I deserve it? All this stuff. And I didn't call, like, my best friend in the world. I called you. I was like, I need... I need uh, help. <laughs> I need somebody who I know has been in a similar, you know, the trajectory has been somewhat the same. Mm-hmm. And, and I think the same thing of you. You're such a, a unique 
individual woman who I just admire beyond. Do you see how I closed my eyes because I couldn't make eye contact with you because it made me nervous. I it made like, you nervous like, I've just got chicken skin over here. I'm like, I it's disagree so on you. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, it's so inappropriate to like cry during actors on actors. <laughs> Why? That's what the people want to see. They're like, she, she cried. Crying. She cried. It's crying. She's like Barbara it's real. It's real. Yeah. yeah it's she, got her. she, got she her loves go. her. She really loves <laughs> she that like, one. <laughs> ageism is, I mean, here ageism is, is in this country. It's in this country. It's in the water no matter what we yeah. do. Yeah. I do... I do have to really honestly admit that I feel that I am trying to hold the proverbial window that I feel I have mm -hmm. in front of me open with like every limb I have. That's why I work out like yeah. a crazy person. I'm like in a I'm fight like, with time. I'm like, I got you time, I Don't got you. Close. Just come on, I know it's supposed to stop at 45. You will not, you will not. And then I'm like, Meh. I feel like, like there's I just, this like dance. It's a weird dance it's like because a as, daily much as, I, yeah, I'm, as much as I want to sort of go, listen, here, you know, sometimes you have to combat your anxieties or your fears with facts. Mm -hmm. And here are the facts. You know, I have been working more. I am playing complicated women. There are, I do see it out in front of me. Mm -hmm. The landscape looks different. The stories that are being told look different. But there's still, I can feel it. I just feel like there's something running after me. And that any minute, if I don't, if I'm not careful, that door is going to close. And, it, and I don't know how much of it is is sort of uh, imprinted on me. I do feel like something, you know, father time is breathing down my neck. And notice that I don't say mother time. It feels like- It is father time. It feels time. like father time. Um, um, yeah. In terms of what has been imprinted in my brain about when a career will stop. It's uh, really interesting. You know. I don't feel it from the sense of career because mm -hmm. I do feel like so many more doors are open to me now. And it started for me in my 40s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, for me, it's the um, sort of physical mm -hmm. confrontation mm -hmm. of my face and changing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and knowing that this is my money. Mm -hmm. And actually, this is your money. Well, my heart is my money, but I'm saying the way I move my face. I know. Do you know what I mean? But I like, feel I like can't... this informs that. And at the Absolutely. end of the day, the joy... even though I know that that's a thing to say that, that but, we wish it, it, it... No, when I say it's my money, I mean it has to move. This yes, is yes. the expressions in my face oh, is yeah. where my money is. You can't stick anything Not in, in there, no. it looking pretty. Right, right, right. But the society makes me think yeah. it's supposed to look young and pretty and like wrinkle-free. And I disagree, but yet... Disagree on it. I disagree Agree on, on it. it. I hear but you. I feel there's that societal confrontation of like look at the wrinkles. I'm like, they are the best part. Mm -hmm. This is my history right mm -hmm. here. This is my this story. This is the number of times I laughed with exactly. my friends. This is the time that, that person broke my heart. Yes. And, yeah. and all the joy that comes from my heart like moves through and pulses in my face in and ways. And for that, me, the the actors' faces that I love the most yes. are the ones where I can see every Everything. little moment, every little molecule oh. of you know memory and sorrow and yes, joy yes. and and those are the faces that I'm that I gravitate that towards I'm drawn and to and yet you have the the counterpoint I of know. the faces that are sometimes more celebrated and the physical uh, communication of success and beauty and, uh, and power and, and is translated and through something trans, that yeah. doesn't always and you know as as a black woman mm -hmm. as well it's like looking at the where what there is to look towards mm -hmm. I mean, I'm really grateful. I have a mom who's 75 mm -hmm. and her face looks like just a woman who swallowed the sun. <laughs> I mean, true. it really, you yeah. know, and she's That's a 75 year old mm -hmm. woman and she's gorgeous mm -hmm. and sexy and full of agency and mm -hmm. all of those things. And so that's what I long to walk towards. And yet on a daily basis, you're sort of confronted by this other idea of, of father time. What do you do to what are you doing actively to fight it? Mentally um, or spiritually or physically? I think mostly joy. Yeah. Like I finding it wherever you can. Finding it wherever I can. Mm -hmm. And you know, I really look to trees and mm -hmm. birds and mm -hmm. lizards and not like other people's faces. I think that's really smart. I feel like those are the things. What about you? What do you do to I use a lot of electrical stimulation on my face? And um, um moisturizer. I, a lot of lasers and moisturizers. Moisturizers. The internal stuff is like I mean, you're ridiculous. I'm, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I I like to read. I like to read a lot of books mm -hmm. um, uh, about the latest creams I can put on my She's face. I'm being kidding. Ridiculous. I'm kidding. I, you know, 
I have the same thing. You know, my mother is is a very youthful, you know, but it's like, what if she weren't? I mean, I this know. is the thing of like, thing. what if she weren't? What would what what would I be using as my mirror? And, mm. and what do we, I, I mean, I, but I think what you said earlier, which was so complimentary and lovely to me, and I say the same thing back to you, is we have each other. We do. We have a new uh, band of, of and strength I think, that and I, I think we are looking to one another now for reality. And there is a band in the industry. Yes, I think that that has mm -hmm. emerged in the last few years of, Let's hold hands instead of pushing each other out of the yep. way. And let's celebrate uh, the reality and stop, you know, sort of propagating this idea of uh, perfection. And also and, the reality of the experience. Um, yes. Those moments that feel scary. That feel those scary moments, when you I mean, feel frightened. You and I at the I top of a red carpet together like, okay, oh my God. this is terrifying. This is so scary. Yes. It's so scary. It's not normal. It's not normal. It's not within the bandwidth no. of anything that you do no. in human life. Right. The other thing I realized recently, which I um, know we're completely off topic, but <laughs> I realized recently that the thing that I love most about my life mm -hmm. is my humanity, mm -hmm. which is what I share in my work. Yes. It's the gift. It's yeah. it's what mm -hmm. that's the gift of the thing that gets mm -hmm. shared that mm -hmm. we identify with. When I see somebody, I go, oh, my God, like, I know that human. Well, that's the thing. That's the job. And I think that's ultimately where the where the nobility in the work is. Oh, it's, I think it's is that you're actually giving an, a, another person watching mm -hmm. an opportunity to see themselves. Yeah. And if you if you hide it or obfuscate yes. it with other things that sort of keep you hidden from the world, then you're not sharing the very thing that makes and another person feel less alone on the planet. Absolutely. You know? And it's if in my own life experience, I get further and further from my humanity, then I have nothing to share. Nothing to offer. Nothing, yeah. yeah exactly. And so I do think that um, the landscape of our industry in mm -hmm. terms of the stories that are being told mm -hmm. and the desire to hear that kind mm -hmm. of complex, nuanced, and beautiful humanity from women mm -hmm. um, is expanding. It is expanding. It's not fast enough. I think enough. people are afraid, you know? I think I people know. are afraid. Because what do we do when you undo that thing you've got so tightly knit that and wound? Perfection that perfection of a... Yes, and yeah. what you want it to be. And there are plenty of people who want to see their movie stars just yes. locally, you know, not a hair out of place and everything perfect because they want... It's aspirational. Right. And and I understand that. At this, But for me... I'm more interested in seeing the underbelly. I'm more interested in seeing the thing that makes me go, oh my that God. That unzip. I'm not alone on the planet yeah. with these fears and these feelings that I have. And I don't have to be terrified because this is this is uh, an external communication of, of of all of that in a way that makes it okay. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I, I just, do. And and I and I think there's space for that. I mean, even like I'm on network television. Yeah. Um, and your show, go. I, th I think it's extraordinary what Blackish does in terms of where it's willing to go. Yeah. You know, that, that's it's, atypical. I feel, really, I feel proud of You it. should, because yeah. that is not the norm for, for network television and or for anything, really. People, definitely but not definitely for network not for television. Network, and yeah. then I think also, um, you know, one of the things that I've experienced in my character is that, and what I really have attempted to stretch mm -hmm, about it, mm -hmm is that I'm not one thing mm -hmm. and that we rarely see black women that are thriving and not just surviving. Interesting. Um, we rarely see married couples that are actually in love mm -hmm. um, and who enjoy and respect each other, right. even in our difference. It's like the conceit of the show was always wrapped around how much they the don't contention. get along in the contention. Yeah. And it was one of the things that drew me to the role. And it's also been one of the things that I constantly am like bringing forward, even mm -hmm. when there's like an argument scene mm -hmm. written, even though we're on a comedy. Mm -hmm. I like, it's like, how do you breathe the love into mm -hmm. that? Um, and then how do I bring the life of my beau mm -hmm. that is off screen mm -hmm. so into that she's life, not, yeah. so that she's not just a reflection of him. So she's mm -hmm. not just the wife. And that has been a lot of me asking why, why, why. Mm -hmm. So why would I say that? Well, for mm, mm -hmm. if it's just because of him, then I need then a I real need... reason. <laughs> and do they give you one? They do. Good. They do. They're obsessed with your very hot doctor, Mom. It's OK. That's the problem. Oh. Tone it down, Mom. Ooh. You're holding it together pretty well for 35. But right now, just ease up. Do you really think your mom is 35? You're not 35. Well. If you think I look 35, She's not do I look 35? What's your experience been in terms of, I mean, American mm. Horror Story, like you've done. It's hard because I've, I mean, the blessing of it is that I've played, I don't even know how many characters. I have a so. really clear, interesting question. Okay. Did you have to see a chiropractor <laughs> 
after the two-headed girl because you had to tilt uh, a particular I way. I did, which I was, was my very worried choice, about you. which okay. was like one of those things where I'd watched a video of some real conjoined twins and it was how their physical bodies were relating to one another. Okay. And I thought, let's not do something that looks just like a split screen. Right. So I, I did do that, but it, it wasn't wasn't great for my neck. I was going to say, uh-uh. I was worried about hazard, you. Yeah, I was worried about you. you. Know okay, what? I didn't mean to cut you but off. But I got to play I've this. I've wanted to ask that for quite some time now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But I got to play, you know, I've played the range of things I've, I've been able to do on that show has been, you know, I think last year I played three characters in one episode, uh, I think, um, which was like my wild. dream. I know. And it really, listen, I, all I want is a peg leg and a black tooth is all I want in any role I pay ever is just, I want to be a pirate mixed with, I don't just want <laughs> one tooth out and a, and a, and a peg leg. This is your dream. I kind of just. I'm not judging it. Just, I am not judging it. I just it. like I, I. I agree on it. I, I think <laughs> she agrees on it. I agree on it. I think sometimes what I have a really hard time with is right before I go to do a scene, and if you're ever playing a character, or even even if you know the character I'm playing right now, I'm in the middle of shooting uh, the show about Nurse Ratchet, and I'm not. Mm. She's not particularly glamorous or mm. anything like that, but. You know, the upkeep of the powdering and the the buttoning and the touching and the wig and the thing. And sometimes I just want to try to do the scene and think about being a person in a room with another person and what's at stake and what's going on. But there are, you know, responsibilities real, real and parts, real considerations yeah. that everybody's, you yeah. know, has a job and is responsible people for. Don't, people don't want to be it's distracted really, But it's really by your hard because sometimes I just want to, you know, what if I just didn't get powdered? What if I just didn't have a perfect button on my shirt? What would happen? Would the world fall apart? Nope. Would people go, oh, she's shiny. I'm shiny too sometimes. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like I, there, it's sometimes. Well, I also I, think television's a little different in that sense. Cause, yeah. Um, with the, I don't know. It seems that things have to be just so. They in movies, do, I feel like there's a maybe there's a, a softer bit. edge on things. I guess, but I just am desperate to play a character where I don't have to. I think about men going into work in the morning. Well, They're Anthony's in hair and makeup way longer than me. Truly? Dead serious. Why? Anthony gets, I'm not, I mean, this is not to throw him under the bus. He is absolutely fine about this. Okay. He comes in with the same amount of time as me. He puts on hot gloves on his hands. No. He puts thingies under. At lunch, he comes back and they do a whole thing. <laughs> I and then at the end of every day, he gets a little mini facial. Okay, but, but here's my thing, though. <laughs> if I wanted to do that at lunch, I couldn't because the rebuild I know. after couldn't. would be too extraordinary. No, you know? they do it to depuff him or okay, something. I well, don't know. I, I would, I just, you'd have to start from scratch. It's just when my alarm goes I off told you that's, at 445 in I the know. morning to be there at 6 a.m. and my male counterpart First comes in all, at 820. This is what's wonderful is you wake up at 445 <laughs> to be there at 6. I wake up at 445 to be there at 5. <laughs> okay, well, here's the truth. I wake up at 430 to leave at 5 to be there at 530. Okay. Like I give myself a half hour. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Just, and then I got, I just, but I'm just saying there is a part of me that when I get there and the guy's like, hey, can I have a razor? And it's just like mm, in the trailer. Of course. And they but do you know, that, that's and then... a big part of, to me, the ageism, sexism, yeah. all of these things that we're upholding a particular standard as yeah. women. But I'm attached that... to it, too. I have to I have to honestly say, you know, for all of the moment when I wished everyone would just stand down and just let it be what it is. Then I, I know that I would see it and be like, oh, my God, I look like a melting pile of butter. You know, I don't. Yes, I, I've, I said, worry. I've said that. I worry. You know, so it's both. It's hard to hold as a woman mm. for me, both things, because I do want both. I want to not care. And I also don't want to be dissatisfied with what I'm seeing. Agreed. Uh, so it's a complicated knife's edge thing to try to figure out how to. How to find the balance. How to find the balance because it lives somewhere in the middle like everything does, really. It's just hard to know, you know, when to... That's the reason that when I was directing, I... Because I I truly, as a human being, not as a working actor, I don't really care that much. I certainly don't wear any makeup makeup as a Tracy. Me neither. Uh, Like, I don't... When I'm myself, like, it's part of the reason. Like, I... I long for days that I don't have to put mascara on. Me too. Taking mascara off is really... (laughs) <laughs> Such a chore. That Neutrogena wipe, though, to me, there's nothing better. I use just the bio- tr- I Oh, really? Oh, yeah. yeah. I, and I can't, I just know it's a whole thing. I okay. I sit, I put the two, and then I, no, no. It's oh. a whole thing, and I wear contacts, so it's a oh. thing. Mm-hmm. And I, anyway. But, you know, these are the, like, really high-class problems. Really? Very, very, very high class problems. Um, yeah. So I'm not complaining, but there, Mascara. it is. Mascara! Wah! Like, yeah. really. I I, like, shut up, Tracy. <laughs> these are not, these are not problems, well, but. 
Um, as a as a person, mm -hmm. I don't care about those things, but I do understand that they're part of the machine right. that and makes the magic. Yes, and you, you know? just, I can't quite calibrate yet for myself mm -hmm. how to really let my foot off the gas and say, so you're shiny, so you look a little, and, and, and take the shiny part away. You, you don't look rested, you don't mm -hmm. look well, you don't look good. The, you know, these kinds of internal, um, and, but I think it's very subjective, you know, mm -hmm. where there are moments when if I, if I could watch the, if, if, if in a scene I'm doing something where I feel incredibly connected to another actor, or there's something particularly invigorating about the work itself, I do find myself paying less attention to it. It's For just, me, mm -hmm. I personally, mm -hmm would not wear makeup on camera. I find makeup distracting. As an actress. Yes, when, when I watch, watch myself and other people. Huh. I don't, I, I, I find it distracting. Mm -hmm. I love seeing the way people's faces change mm -hmm. color when different feelings go through yes, them. Me too. I actually love the um, behavioral things that we do when we think our nose is shiny. Yeah. Um, the, the way, way we you touch your ass when you walk out of a room because yes. you're afraid someone's looking at yeah. you. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Like the, I, those kinds of things to me are like, the it just feels so the good and I, and I often am distracted by the perfection of how a face starts to look I lost you you're safe now I couldn't feel their souls there was nothing I couldn't bring them back why couldn't I bring them back you've never experienced sexism well I've never experienced um you know it it Here's what's hard about it for me is that, uh, and I've, I have talked about this some, but because of when I started to work in a more dedicated way, it happened to be my my sort of collaboration and marriage with Ryan Murphy, who mm. sort of is sort of singularly interested in telling the stories of women. Uh, yeah. Uh, and in such, in such a, a delicious, a delicious way. complicated, yeah. sometimes very fun way, sometimes very deep and serious way that I have only ever felt my value as a woman mm. on that set. And that's where I've spent the bulk of my working life in the mm. last 10 years. So mm. so prior to that, I, I don't know, and this is a sad truth and probably says more about, you know, what kind of person I was developing as a young person. I don't know if I would have noticed mm. when I was younger, like what was sexism and what was, um, uh, I don't even know what the word is, it just, just sort of the just sort of the, the dismissal of, of me as a just being not interested in me as a person mm. versus not being interested in me because I'm a woman, you mm. know, and I don't mean sexually. I mean, just interested in me. You know? My experience so. around sexism um, has not been specifically having myself um, be dismissed, mm -hmm. but the limited way, the limited expectation of me mm -hmm. and the limited mm -hmm. idea of what I'm meant to contribute. Mm -hmm. Um, in a way that it's uh, it's very frustrating. Like, mm -hmm. I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. You know, or I'm sorry, are we just talking about what I look like here? Mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. how come? Have you been able to vocalize that in well, the Well, I mean, clearly well, I am a vocalizer. But were you always? Yes, oh. absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, as a matter of fact, for me, it's been about um, learning where it is most effective mm -hmm. to vocalize certain things mm -hmm. and um, because of the kind of um, sort of clear person I am and not, I'm not afraid of saying what I am seeing, mm -hmm. um, I've had to sort of um, adjust sometimes how I say things mm -hmm. because if a man said exactly what I said, it would be received one way. Mm -hmm. And when I say it, it's received another way, mm -hmm. especially not just as a woman, but as a black woman. Mm -hmm. um, there's an expectation of aggressiveness or mm -hmm. um, whatever that is, uh, that is preconceived that has nothing to do with me. And I have to take it into account if my goal is being effective. So, um, where do you think that comes from your ability to do that comfortably to speak up comfortably yeah. the way I was raised? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, my mom really was clear that, um, just cause someone was a teacher, they didn't know better than you. Interesting. Um, and to trust your instincts and speak up if something feels uncomfortable. And if you don't feel comfortable speaking up, publicly speak up to me. Um, and so from a young age, I have been um, using my own self as my compass. Mm. And if something feels not right to me, now I have personally translated that often into what have I done wrong, mm. instead of taking into account that the system around me might be the thing that's in question and not mm -hmm. actually me and my motives mm -hmm. or my 
intentions or my actions or my behavior. Mm -hmm. um, and that has come later in life for me. As an adult, I've been able to kind of um, filter out which part is mine, which part is societal, which part mm. is the system, which part is the person that was coming at me. Um, that's not easy. That takes a tribe of, you know, your safe people around you. I got to, be able to make I gotta spend a little more time with you, I think, because <laughs> I could I could use a healthy dose of that. Yeah, I, I feel like it's, it's, a, really it's a tough special. one it's a, it's a, to be able to speak up. It's a special quality, I think, to to have your your own uh, ability to navigate something be dictated by your own personal assessment of something. Mm -hmm. I think I'm more uh, susceptible to uh, what's happening so around what's happening me. Around yeah. You. yeah, and that is absolutely a product of my upbringing, mm -hmm. whereas yours is. But that's yeah. I'd rather have you. <laughs> I'd rather have yours. I don't know. With it comes its own yeah, bag sure. of difficulty, you know. But I did have a real example. I mean, my mom that's navigated amazing. herself that way, um, and I also saw what the repercussion of that mm -hmm. was. Um, mm -hmm. And so I have a real tendency, you know, I, I'm a strong believer in kindness and curiosity and compassion. Like those are some of my guiding principles in life. And yet I'm a really strong, really clear, articulate personality. Mm -hmm. So, and a big personality, like, no. yeah, you know, no. I'm, a, I'm a big personality. I don't think so. But it's funny because I come from a planet where they're like a lot, uh, 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 come from a planet. <laughs> I come from a planet. I come from a where, family where, there was, where there's a lot of big planets. Like we were all these big planets. Now who's the metaphor girl now? Did I mess it you? up? No, you Did didn't. Right? Sort of. I, I come from a planet that started where there's wrong. a lot of planets. <laughs> <laughs> and also there's planets that I'm on that planet. Planet with the with planet. With the planet. With a big planet. With a big other planet. So we do both share a stylist. <laughs> although I dressed myself she today. Did. I and, did not. And yet we're, we're wearing the same. <laughs> which means she's permeated something. In this Either IP. that, well, I think the reason that I love working with Carla so is she because she, you. Ha, well, she has the same yeah. similar taste to yeah, me. Yeah, totally. So, like, I found somebody who is an expert and gifted in an area that really matches my taste that I already had. Would you ever walk a red carpet with no makeup on? Yeah. I believe I have. You have? Yeah. Huh. I prefer my face without makeup. You do? Mm-hmm. I, I actually would... prefer my face. I think well, it has natural shading. One of the greatest shading. faces on the I do not have you, one of the greatest on faces. On the planet I, I live on, I would I, that's say you have one of the greatest faces. I am faces. not as in love with that. I think there's oh. certain lighting and certain angles that oh, no. make my face look less alien-like. I disagree alien -like. on that. I have I to say, I disagree on that. But I remember having a conversation with Michelle Dockery once uh, at some Emmy thing, and it was it was a conversation about what would happen if we all wore sneakers yeah. and showed up in our jeans, and you know, would it be? But then. There's an industry there, based on us showing up in very yes, good clothes. Yes, but there's also a part of you that, that really enjoys putting on a I beautiful love dress. I love dressing up. And, and, you know, the shoe thing, I would like to come up with a new way. A new way do, of handling that. A new way of handling but the But Carla, shoe. No. I think, it to me, Carla Welch, um, who's the stylist that we share, Carla dresses me for red carpet, but yeah. I dress myself for my life. Yeah, totally. So my Instagram is, like, mostly my clothes. <laughs> I, I dress love. myself today. But I think Carla women... Mm -hmm. are a particular yes, kind I of totally woman, agree. which is why we're friends, yes. which is why I'm friends with Carla, yeah. which is why I love her. Mm -hmm. She is a bold, smart woman who has a voice, cares about the world around her. She is socially engaged, and she understands that fashion is another way of expressing yourself, of expressing yourself yeah. that it's not some sort of weird game about trying to be something no or do something that's appropriate for the for the event she's sort of like not that person not that person which is incredibly liberating especially if i think i'm a little more of a shy dresser than you are even though i will go th excuse me you're not a shy I dresser i will go there it's just you're you have a more this is what i want to say about you that's you're, that's so interesting and i feel like this is the way <laughs> i would describe you in your clothes <laughs> so you're like this and me. you're like this and you're like, yeah, okay, I'll take it. <laughs>